This is ThinkTech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Glenn Martinez of Olamana Gardens, and this is Miss Natalie Cash, my assistant and the farm manager. She yeah. helps me out a lot, not I... only with the show, but the farm. It's good stuff. And uh, she prepared a program for you guys today that we did down in Australia, and it was labeled in the 18 reasons to use airlift pumps, okay? Now, a lot of people just get hung up on it, you know, what is it about? So I'd like to show that what most people are using are little pumps like this. And these little pumps are called submersible pumps. Basically, they sit inside the water, and the electricity is going out. Now, that's a little bit of a problem because you've got electricity in water. Our biggest problem is people, particularly children, tend to pick it up by the cord. Mm. They pull the cord out, and then that breaks the seals. Oil come out, or you feel that you see the fish swim over by the pump, and we see them swim funny, and then they go away. They come back, they swim funny, and they go away. There's an electrical short in here, mm. okay? And because of potential danger, somebody sticking their hand in the water and being injured, they make us use uh, things like GFIs and that. So what we want to talk about is getting rid of the submersible pumps. We virtually do not use any submersible pumps. Not at all. The only time we're going to use one on the farm is if we're going to set it inside of a pump, a tank, to pump it out on the ground like we're doing mm -hmm. a field day yeah. cleanup, okay? But so I want to go over some of the benefits of it, okay, that we're going to do. And one is they're lower cost. When we go lower cost uh, to doing install costs, the problem, all of this thing with airlift, with us at Olamana Gardens, started with Waikiki Elementary School. Mm -hmm. yep. They got a grant for $2,500. And so we designed a cute educational system for them, 175-gallon water tank, the mm -hmm. grow beds, the float beds, the bucket siphons, and everything. And then they said, oh, but we're not going to be right next to a building where there's electricity. It's going to be out, not in, in the, the playground, but in the yard. And the electrician wanted $2,500 for a licensed electrical contractor to dig down, bust through the concrete, and then trench 18 inches deep, and then come up and then put a GFI receptacle and all that with it. So they were going to use their money they had the first year to install a lonely little outlet out in the middle of the yard. And we would wait till next year. They would apply for another grant, and then we go on. We said, no, 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 no. We'll design an aquaponics system that doesn't need electricity out in the yard. Yes. And that's when we started down the road with the airlift pump. So what we end up doing is you have a, a you know, so these are little commercial pumps you see here, little, they're called submersible. See the little filter there? Well, guess what gets clogged? So imagine filter, me trying to yes. tell a school teacher she has to go out every day and pull the pump up and clean it and put it back in. Mm -hmm. And once a week, she has to disassemble it. Mm -hmm. Good luck to anybody telling a school teacher of elementary kids or, or higher that they have another chore to do, a daily chore. It's not going to happen. On the other hand, our airlifts go through, and we virtually never clean them, okay? The, the smallest pipe is a one-inch pipe, so everything just goes through it. So we don't have any filters to clean, and we pump the solids out of the fish tank. Now, one yeah. thing to keep in mind, if you have a little pump like that, and it has a little foam thing in there, mm -hmm. it's going to clog up. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you clean it every day, but it clogs up. Mm -hmm. The problem is all the fish poop is staying in the tank. Mm -hmm. It's not being taken out. On the other hand, we put a hole in the side of the fish tank, come out, put a well in called a sump well. We dig a hole with a post hole digger about two feet deep, yeah. and we put the pump, and we drop my airlift in it, yeah. and it pumps all that stuff out and up into the cinder mm -hmm. beds or the filters mm -hmm. where you get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Okay? So our fish tank, we don't have to do the annual cleaning of the fish tank anymore because it's just never dirty. Yes, that's so, right. By not doing the electrical, all we have to do now, we bought a bunch of little child-sized picks. We had the school kids pick a little thing about a ditch about two inches wide, and about two inches deep, right across the yard. Yeah. Then we, we put a PVC in there, and we put the dirt in the grass and kept saying, green side up, green side up, yeah. <laughs> you know, and we put it back in. And then, because we didn't need any permits because it was just an no. empty piece of PVC pipe, mm -hmm. which we hooked up with a garden hose fitting to the air compressor. Mm -hmm. It is still running. We've never had a service call That's from right. anybody for an airlift. We've been doing them for eight years now, yes. and we, we, don't, we don't have any service contracts or anything because they're pretty much, you're done. You know, yeah. You're in there. Okay? So one of the things we mentioned is when the electrician went out there, he had to put the GFI mm -hmm. up there. I think we have a picture of that, the GFI receptacle. And that has, see the little reset button and this test button? And you see there it says test monthly. You see that? Who does it? 
Did anybody go in their bathroom or their garage and test that monthly? If you don't test it monthly, it's not going to work the day you need it. It has oh to be exercised, okay, and going back and forth. Now, a lot of people hate these things because you plug into them and they trip off. Yeah. And for sometimes and no apparent off. reason. It's a high humidity day or whatever, right? Or the cord is too long and the inductance trips it off. So you can get a lot of false tripping. Yeah. Now, it's the only thing in America that's designed to save your life. An electrical is a mm. ground fault interrupter, okay? Now, you say, well, about all the breakers. Well, they protect the wiring in the house from catching fire. So indirectly, they save lives. That's what the National Electrical Code is about. But when you take these little outlets, but you see that little outlet? Now, the next slide's going to show you, you, if you want to put it out in the yard, you've got to put it in a weatherproof enclosure. Yeah. The weatherproof enclosure, that little Lexan cover, costs more than the receptacle does, mm -hmm. okay? So you open it up and you put it in. But you can't use the flat one, the kind where it's weatherproof, except when you open it and you plug the cord, because then you're not weatherproof anymore. Yeah. So you see the inherent problem. For us in the school year, guess when it trips all by itself? On a when four you're not week, there. <laughs> when you're not there. On a four-day weekend, or what happens to you know Easter break or Christmas yeah. break, these things will trip off and they'll be there. So the teacher comes back to all yeah. dead fish. Yeah. And we have gone to some schools changing out dead fish, right? It's Not like a little a kid dropping ice cream cone. Yeah. What you going to do, right? And so we get them set up. So he said, you know what? Now, when I do my air, and we have a little air pumps, a little air compressor pumps going, and this is a typical one. Hako is one of our favorite brands. Yes, They're very it is. quiet. They're available all over the place. And uh, another brand name is Metella. And by doing those, they hum. They hum so quietly, yeah. we put them in classrooms, and we have no complaint. Yeah. In fact, the only complaint we have is they asked me to put a light on it so the teacher can see across the room a, a visual confirmation it's running. Otherwise, she has to walk back and actually touch it to feel it going or look outside. So and a lot of our airlift pumps, you're going to see we put clear pipes so they see the water going up and down, right? And what's good about those pumps, too, is it's so quiet. You don't hear the pump, but you can hear the water running. You hear the water. I like That's all you hear the is water. a waterfall, yes. right? Yeah. The other thing is when you use these little submersible pumps, these little guys like this, the hose goes here, and then it has a hook wherever it's going to go to. Yeah. And a lot of times you don't see where the water's going in. So you have no visual indication that the water is being pumped mm -hmm. until you have dead fish. And that's when you find out, quote, yes. what went wrong yes. in that. Yes. And that one of the things really cute about the airlift pumps, too, is we don't want the kids going out there pulling these up by the electrical cords mm -hmm. for obvious reasons, right? And we're not going to have them disassemble it to clean the filter and put it back together. But my airlift yes. pump, they're just right. a piece of like one-inch pipe inside of a two-inch pipe dropped into a little mm -hmm. sump well or in the side of the tank. Sure the is. kids take them out, hose them off, put them back in. There is nothing to break. Yep. There are no moving parts. Right. So it has a really great thing. The other one is the virtually maintenance free. Because they're PVC, they pump salt water. We do salt water in an aquaponic system. They do fresh water, no problem at all. And oddly enough, a guy came from India, wanted mm -hmm. to license my technology, and he took it to India. And I said, Oh, you're doing aquaponics? And he was a little shy. He says, No, I do sewage system. We love your pumps because, and they do four, six, and eight inch pipes using yes. my air lifts because it pumps the sewage and it aerates it mm -hmm. and they don't have to clean them. You know, yep. you can see the obviousness there, right? Mm -hmm. So by having no moving parts, in fact, we only have one pump, the burper pump, and its only moving part is a little check, check valve. valve. It just goes back and forth, right? That's it. And, uh, and, so, and they're rated to pump human sewage up a hill and not come mm -hmm. back to, to last 20 to 40 years. Wow. So an aquaponics will probably outlive us all. We've never replaced one. Not yeah, yet. not yet. And so in eight years. The other one is, well, oddly enough, we went to Florida and we're visiting down there a place called Morning Star. They train yes. missionaries to go overseas mm -hmm. to the very serious training facility doing aquaponics. Yeah. That guy comes up and gives me a big man hug, almost picks me up off the ground. He says, she's changed our life. I said, how's that? And he says, well, the way you separate the stock. I had no clue what he was talking about. I said, well, show me how you're doing it. So he brings me over and he shows me his big fish tanks and they took black pipe, uh, polypropylene yeah. pipe, the irrigation type pipe, and they cut quarter inch slits and they put it all the way around the fish tank. Mm -hmm. And they put it just below the surface. Mm -hmm. So when the babies are born, they go up to the surface. Mm -hmm. And normally you and I are out there with nets chasing right. around. We got we to gotta save them before they become breakfast, right? Yep. Okay. Well, what happens is the little fish came up and they ran into the slots. 
the, Which got all sucked. the way around, and my airlift picked it up, threw it into a 55-gallon aquarium that was sitting on a table right next to the tank, yeah. and then that tank overflowed back to the fish tank. But it had a screen to keep the babies from going back in. So you pump the babies up, the airlift doesn't bother them at all, and then you catch them. So they come out, they got 1,500 little babies they in the do. morning. They you do. and I were it's, out there with little nets. It's such a Maybe cool Maybe we catch operation. 100 or 200, right? Yeah. And that. So it did a lot better. Uh, the other one is that we do it with shrimp. And when they do shrimp, they put that same black pipe on the bottom mm -hmm. of the tank because shrimp are down on the bottom mm -hmm. crawling around. They would go into it. Again, we would lift them out and get them out. Yep. And that. And uh, which reminds me of a story. I went out to the North Shore here, and Linda Gusman, we helped her do a harvest in that. And she was really sweet. She saw me a whole bunch of baby Babies. shrimp, yep. okay? And what were they, 25 cents a piece, I think? Like that, yeah. So I bought $100 worth, yeah. you know? So 100 bucks, I got all these little baby shrimp. Yeah. We come home, we put them in a 55 gallon aquarium. aquarium. We yes. bought little baby shrimp food for them and everything. Yeah. And they started growing. First, you could hardly see them. Yeah. You know, they little monkeys. That's right. Then they started growing up. And then you want watch a larger one, about three quarter inch. She would yeah. sit there on a rock. And the little ones come by and go, hi, uncle, have you seen? And he goes, go, and he'd eat them. That's and right. then we'd come by. And we watched him grow yeah. every day. Yeah. Well, my $100 worth of baby shrimp, when I got all <laughs> done at the end of it, I had 15 large shrimp. That was it, you know? And you say, but you started with 400. Yeah, well, it didn't quite work out the way we planned, right? No, I didn't. So what we found out, you have to separate your yes. things. Yes. And so we use these. So the little ones will run and hide, and then we'll pump them over and keep them in their separate tanks so they don't get all eaten up. Yeah. The, right. One of the things also is when people run submersible pumps or like swimming pool pump, it becomes economics. Like people oh, will yes. come by and they gave me a swimming pool pump, just yeah. a gift. Glenn, I'm a contractor. We they took should. out it's running. So we plug it in. Boy, did that thing pump water. Mm -hmm. But then it used 12 amps. Mm -hmm. And we did a little spreadsheet. We got out our electric bill, and we divided the number of kilowatt hours we got charged to, into the, the money, into mm -hmm. how many kilowatts we used, and it came up to about 34 cents a kilowatt hour. Yeah. Okay? So if you look at it, so every 1,000 watts, you know, is going to be 34 cents. So anyway, you do the math, and we made a little Excel spreadsheet, which mm -hmm. we share up on our webpage, and it shows you look at any device, and if it says it uses half an amp, you run your finger down half an amp, yeah. and it says how many days a month you're going to do it. Well, most of us are running things 24 hours a day for 30 months. You come across, and it tells you it's going to cost you $30 a month to run that pump, one amp. But wait a minute. The swimming pool pump was 12 amps. So it's going to be 12 times 30. That's right. Oh, my gosh. So when I got my first $400 electric bill, we unplugged that pump. We had to go down and buy a small pump, a much smaller pump, mm -hmm. to put in, but it wouldn't pump the volume. So then we added the air, and the air helped lift the water. And by yeah, using the pump much and the air, we cut our bill down, and now we're running the whole farm for $87 a month. You know, eighty-seven, eighty-eight dollars month to month. So tremendous savings. Okay. Plus that, I'm not burning out an expensive pump. Okay. That's right. Because I got the I one free. But anybody here at swimming pools knows swimming pool pumps are a bit dear in price. They sit in the yeah. six and seven hundred dollar range. Okay. But even when somebody gives me something, if it uses that much energy, that's the hidden cost. And actually, you know? when we go and visit people. And we go and they have a beautiful um, waterfall mm -hmm. scenery there. They're not running their pumps. When they wait till we get there, then they turn their water pump on to make their waterfall work yeah. because they only can run it for just oh, yeah. a short time. Yeah, we were down in, in Kona at some rich people's houses, okay, yeah. very, uh, very high-end people. And they went and turned on the pumps so we could see the things running <laughs> because each pump was costing them $1,500 yeah. a month right. to run the pump. That's so right. they start putting them on timers. In fact, we have clients here in, uh, in Kaneohe um, up in uh, Haiku Plantation that when they go walking down, the gentleman flips the switch on. Well, people say, what was that? So he had me come over and put a motion detector. So now when they come walking down the walkway, it detects them. Instead of turning on a light, it turns on the pump. So the water's just coming down the mountain when they get out to the waterfall. 
-hmm. And as they leave, it turns off, it times off. He has it set to run for 30 minutes and that's it. Now that's a shame, folks, when you can't afford to run your equipment so like that. Now see this, this is pumping pipe. solids Those through. This is pretty fantastic stuff. Because the smallest pipe we use is one end. Whatever will fit through the pipe, and this is a two inch one here. Natalie just poured in a whole bucket of beads and four inch long pieces of yarn, and this is pumping up. She's holding the camera sideways, and it's going up just so it'll be vertical, and that to give you a little seasick. And then you see it coming around, all that stuff goes right around the corner. No problem at all, no clogging. So you see the green hose there? That's the air coming in. So it's a green hose inside of a two inch pipe, blowing air, it's only two PSI, you know. Yes. I mean, a balloon has more pressure in it, okay? And it pumps up all that garbage around and around and around, no clogging. How yes. long would how long would a submersible pump like this? Oh, last? not even that. Yeah, it, it would one cinder stone die, and it stops like instantly. Okay? <laughs> yep. Uh, so that's a big one. The other one is we if you have a pump and it's pumping the water up, if it can't go any higher, you would literally have to put the water in a bucket and buy another pump and then pump it up higher and then buy another pump, right? What we do is have one air pump at the bottom, and it will pump it up, and then when that one's full, it pumps it to the next and the next. But yeah, there's only pressurize. one air pump at the mm -hmm. bottom, and that is because air doesn't care about gravity. I can pump air from the ground to the top of a 50-story building, and my air pump doesn't work any harder pumping it up than it would be going that's sideways. That's right, amazing. It's an amazing, amazing thing. So by air being gravity-free, that's a big blessing. You pump water up 50 stores, that's one big, massive pump you're going to have mm -hmm. to have. Okay? Oh, yeah. And that, yeah. That's right. So we take a little break here and uh, share a good message with you. So we'll be right back. Thank you. This is Think Tech today? Hawaii, raising public, public tool, awareness. Tool, tool, tool. No, we can't. Oh, yeah. If I, if I had, if he'd whispered he's going to play the video, I would have. If you, you know, I, but I'll, I'll keep my eye on the monitor this time around. Yeah, pay attention. And uh, David's going to do it. Yeah, we'll, we'll listen to it. Yeah, yeah. That one is what? Uh, what was the next one? The slow the motion. The uh, slow oh, the motion. slow motion, yeah. No, the slow motion is silent. It's silent. Oh, silent? It's silent. Yeah, I'll just talk over it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do this at the end. Remember what we said that we agreed to it. Yeah. Because I want to get through the 18 and then I can use it whatever time. Okay. Hey. <laughs> right. Aloha. Here we are back. I appreciate you all tuning in to Think Tech Hawaii. Yes. Natalie Cash here with me. If you yes. missed the beginning, I'm Glenn Martinez of Olamana Gardens. And we're yeah. going through about 18 reasons, and the reasons are growing. The list is growing. Sure uh, is. Why do you use an airlift over doing these little submersible pumps, okay? Yeah. Keep in mind, we do an airlift. There's a little air compressor sitting on a shelf, higher than whatever the water is, and just a garden hose comes out, mm -hmm. and it works, okay? So there's no electricity in our aquaponic garden. The safety mm -hmm. feature there is awesome. Plus, I do not need to plug it into a GFI, GFI because yeah. it's inside. It's out of the rain. It, it, there's no problem. So we skip that whole construction cost and all of that that goes with it. But we're talking about one airlift can feed the next airlift. Yes. We were down in uh, Dumaguete in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. It's an agricultural college. In fact, yeah. Dumaguete is, is a college town. Mm -hmm. There's five or six major colleges there. So it is, yeah. it is a, a, a straight up educational place. Well, land prices there have gone through the roof. When you have so much going there and it's all built up, so when I say built up, now they're going up. And so what happened is most of their college campus was two-story buildings with green metal roofs on them or Monier tile roofs. They went up and they took off the roof, mm -hmm. exposed the building, you look right in the classroom, then they, they put uh, scaffolding across and tin, and then they poured concrete and they made a concrete roof. Then they waterproofed the roof, and then they, so it got a flat roof now up on the second story roof, and then they put a greenhouse on top of that. And they want to do aquaponics and nursery. They're agriculture college. Yep. So, and they teach teachers. That's, that's their primary mm -hmm. thing. Right? So 
what they did then is we had the fish tanks down on the ground because they had 3,000 gallon tanks. Each thousand gallon tank weighs about 8,000 pounds. So no yeah. way is that going on the roof. So they built the concrete tanks on the ground, dug a hole right next to one of the fish tanks. Mm -hmm. We dumped in, put an empty pipe in there, connected the fish tank. So when I got there, I had a pipe going eight feet down in the ground. I stuck my airlift in it, and my airlift took it up to about 20 feet. Ah, but I had to get to 34 feet. So all we did is put another turbo blaster on top of it. Mm -hmm. And a turbo blaster, is, let's say if you had a, a one-inch pipe coming up, I would put a, a coupling on, and then I would inject air a second time, and I can boost it. And we took it right up to the next level. Yeah. So it just kept going and going. That's a little turbo blaster there. So the water would come in the bottom, the garden hose fitting the air would come in, and the part there by my thumb, it would be air and water yes. coming up. Now the electric pump starts running real easy because it's not feeling the weight yes. of the water because the air is making it so much lighter. And okay? takes it so much higher. And the pump does what it never could have done otherwise. Yeah. Okay. So typically we will take a little pump like this, one of these, and we put it in. If you put it in your pond, let's say your pond is 18 inches to 20 inches of water, this could only pump water about five feet high. That's all. And it just stops. Right? So we hook it up on a clear pipe and you show you going up to there. Then yeah. I put that turbo blaster on there and I turn on the air and I take it to 30 feet. Yeah. Same little pump, but by adding the air, it feeds it up. And the pump makes up for the water being so shallow. Mm -hmm. Now my preferred way is to drill a hole in the side of the tank. But a lot of places yes. we go, they're metal tanks, they're corrugated mm -hmm. steel, or they're concrete tanks, or they've got plastic linings. Really hard to come in sideways with a waterproof fitting, right? Yep. And so you can do a combination. So if you do have a pump, if you add my airlift on top of it, the turbo blast, you take it to new heights. That's you right. know, going on up, okay? Now the other thing I wanted to do is that uh, when you do a, just a water pump, you get pure water. There is no aeration involved, okay? Right. When you do the water pump and you add the air, we have a great video we're going to be showing you in slow motion a little bit here, and it will go up and it bubbles and it falls back and it bubbles and falls back. You'll see that in a little bit. Um, let's see, the verticals easily supply the grow towers. Are you yeah. familiar with the grow towers? These guys here, we can put a little tiny aquarium pump, a yeah. quarter inch tube, into that water there, pump the water up, and it dribbles all the way back down. Mm -hmm. No moving parts whatsoever. Now, when you buy those little things like what you're looking at right there, they're $800 to $1,000 each one of those towers. Yeah. Now, they do grow a lot of food, but they got a weakness. There's a little mechanical pump, like the little submersible pump on the bottom. Yeah. Guess what? You have to open up the access hole to get to it. You got to clean it out at least every week, okay? And there's, there's no fish in this system. No. That's pure hydroponics. That's just chemical, yeah. right? Okay. And when you do hydroponics, that's called chemigation. They normally have chemical A and chemical B, mm. okay? Basically, you NPK, you know, going. And they go back and forth, one one day, one the other day, okay? But there are no living things in there, okay? They don't want, but no matter what you do, you're going to get little bits of roots and other matter get down to the tank, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, by, as soon as they do these kind of tanks, they can't have the fish. We can come, put the fish in there, and all you do is open up the access hole and feed your fish. And it will pump the water all the way up the top, and it comes down. Totally yeah. self-contained aquaponic system. Quite delightful. Okay? The other one I uh, wanted to talk about is a lower repair cost. When that HACO pump, it's only about this big, you know, and that. I think we have a slide showing the parts of the, uh, of the rubber parts that go inside. There you go. You go down to uh, our, our favorite store is Aquaponics Place uh, here in Waimanalo. They're mm -hmm. the aquaponics store for Oahu, as far as I know, the only aquaponics store. You buy that little kit, depending on what size, anywhere from $15 to $40. But it fixes a $200 air compressor, yep. okay? And if you go down there, if you bring your pump in and you set it on the counter, this is Aquaponics Place in Waimanalo, by Waimanalo Feed Store, the back yes. side. Mm -hmm. You set your pump down, you pay for the parts, and the guy installs them. He sure does. I give the guy Travis. five or ten bucks, but my goodness, he just sits there in between customers and he fixes my pump and I pick yeah. it up the next day. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I'm in a rush, I just grab the parts, I go home because when I get home, I turn the pump over. I only got four screws, the lid comes off, then there's four little nuts. I use a little mm -hmm. nut driver and I change those rubber parts out. Mm -hmm. Okay? 
Now, the manufacturer recommends change every year. Uh, we change when they break. And we do. Yeah, we, we have. Do. Yeah. <laughs> we do. Yeah, the change in ahead of time would avoid you not being run. But normally, we have two in every tank. Yeah. You know, on it because what you find is kind of odd. You, it's cheaper to buy uh, two sixty watt pumps than it is one one hundred and twenty watt yeah. pump. Plus, inherently, by having two small pumps, I if one goes out, the other one's still mm -hmm. going. You yeah. know, my fish now can be happy, but they're not dead. Yeah. Right, so that's that's a biggie for us. Uh, but the service life, these little submersible pumps we have, because of the cinder we use, particularly, or anybody mm -hmm. using graveling and aquaponics, it comes through, and that sand gets through the little grill on the outside, and it gets in there, yeah. and it destroys them. There's very few pumps. These submersible pumps here, they sit there in the water, and they pick up the junk off the bottom of your tank. That's where yeah. all the garbage is and then they pump it over, okay? Yeah. And that's, again, electricity in the water, a no-no for us. Well, what about, what that, about your aeration for your water flow? Oh, yeah, the, 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 the mechanical pump's not aerating you at all. You get no, nothing, it's okay? Not. Except to wherever it pumps the water to when it falls, you get it, but you get that no matter how you did it. But one of the things, that, the big one is, when my air pumps run dry, in other words, if I have it coming over and have the little pipe coming out the side in the well or a drum, if that water in the fish tank gets below the overflow level, well, my pump's going to be dry. In electrical, you got to have little switches. It was in that last picture that had a little rubber bulb on the side. And when the water goes down, it turns off, okay? Yeah. That will save your electrical pump. Of course, it's another 20 to $50 for mm -hmm. that little switch. Ours, we, and then it has to fill up to a certain level before it will turn on. That's its mm -hmm. operational rate. Ours run right down to as there's no water, and as soon as there's a little bit of water, it starts running again uh, yeah. because it's just air going through a tube. Yeah. There's no moving parts, so we don't kill things. And that, but uh, did we have that slow motion? You remember what that one was? The video of the slow motion. Can we okay, folks. What you see here is the aeration coming up an airlift pump. Take a look at that. Is just pure beautiful. We're doing this one in slow motion. So you can see how the air and the water are so mixed together. The air is going to go out the top of the pipe. The water is going out to the left. And you see it going down that left-hand white pipe and gushing out at the base of a tomato plant there. So that whole cinder bed will be going green. This is just a little test show setup we did. We like to have some clear pipe so you can just see the action live. Come out with their oxygen meter. Mm -hmm. And the water in the fish tank is only three parts per million, okay? Five is where you want to go. Mm -hmm. We turn on the air pump, it pumps up, comes over, and it's at six parts per million. Mm -hmm. Now, to be scientific, we took the submersible pump, we put it in, we pumped the water up to the bucket, and it came up three, and it was still three, yeah. and it will always be three. Yeah. There's nothing to change it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, tool of the day. Natalie always likes to have a tool. This is something you all buy at the hardware stores. These are the little timers. You crank them and you time them. This I want to share with you. You go to plumbing places and you get yourself a little pressure reducer. You hook this up to the faucet and this, this will last forever. Mm -hmm. If you'll reduce the pressure, you don't break the little gears. Anyway, that's about it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for turning in. Think Tech Hawaii, where you learn yeah. something new every day. Thank you. Every day.